We have created a virtual coworker with a very siloed yeah. perspective. We have only created and taught our virtual coworker yeah. with our information yeah. how we do things, yeah. not pulling from anything else. And now this virtual coworker has quite honestly mm -hmm. is doing the work that somebody else used to do. Yeah. Welcome back to the Jasmine Star Show. Today, we're gonna to be chatting a little bit about how we use AI in our business, but here's the thing. I have a feeling that we are creating this video in not just in a couple months, but in a few years, we might look back at this and say, wow, how small we thought, but we're doing it for documentation purposes. And secondly, we're doing it for you. If you know you want to use AI in your business, if you know you want to use AI more in your business, then we're gonna be talking about five real examples we are using in our business, but before I go on, I want to take a moment to introduce you to Katie Har. She is my right hand. We are co-content creators. She is all things to me. I casually, not casually joke with my husband, who is my best friend and business partner. I said, if I ever had to do an adventure or have a contest or do a trivia night, I know you say otherwise, <laughs> I'm picking Katie. I would do the great race with Katie. I would do Survivor with Katie. I would create a pact with Katie. It's just like anything that this woman sets her mind to, we can go and do. And so she has been a big force on our our team, encouraging the team to go through and leverage AI. So we're going to talk about really simple ways that we're using it now to kind of in, in, excite you and incite you into ways that we're thinking. So Katie, thank you for being here. Yeah, I love it. I'm I, so excited. I'm so excited. Okay, good. Yeah. So she and I are like avid note takers. We use old school paper and pen. So before this podcast, we'd been ideating and we wrote down a few of ideas. So we're, let's just take action and hop in. So Katie, start us off with yeah. number one. Okay, so the first one was a landing page. Hold like on, I'm gonna fix page. your mic. I'm oh, gonna fix your mic. No, 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 we're gonna do this because we're talking over it. See, this is this is what we do. Katie and I are the team where I'm like, oh girl, she's running in, yeah. she fixed, like a queen has to fix another queen's crown Love or it. a podcaster should fix the other podcaster's mic. There it is. There we go, there okay. we go. So landing page or sales page. So we had a template. So you can buy these templates for your landing pages, your sales pages, and it has a very certain design, right? Like you need a big header that's a sentence long, or maybe it's a sentence, but it can't be a long sentence. It has to be a five word sentence or an eight word sentence. And so you have this kind of chicken and egg situation when you buy a template. And the chicken and egg situation is you have some good copy that you wrote and you're like, I like this copy. And then you go to put it in your design and you're like, Ugh, it does. It's not quite right. But then you spend hours trying to figure out how do I make it right? So this is what we did. I took a screenshot of each little block of the section template. So I was like, this is the block one. And I gave it the copy that I had already written in a Google doc. And I said, here's my copy. Here's the design. Can you make my copy work with the design? So let's say my copy had three bullet points, but the design, it looks really great with six. So it knew how to break it out into six bullet points. Mm. Or I had a header that was two sentences and it needed to be one sentence. It made me a one sentence header. So all of a sudden I had copy that worked seamlessly with my design mm. and it didn't require any extra thought or thinking for me. I just said here, do it. It did it. I made a little word tweak and we were ready to go. It took so let's break this down even more, Kitty. Yeah. You got a screenshot, screenshot and then what did you put it into? Right to ChatGPT, I took a screenshot. I was like, here's a screenshot of what my landing page should look like. This and then is she section uploaded one. the photo. Then I, uh, oh, I the, uploaded the, the copy. Just yes. dragged and dropped that screenshot in. Great. Typed in, here's the copy I want. For this section. For this section. Yes. Can you make it work? Absolutely. And the thing I love about ChatGPT is you don't have to be like, really professional, or you can kind of just write out what you're thinking. You could talk to it like a friend, yeah. like an assistant. Like an assistant, or yes. even less than that. Like sometimes I think with no, an assistant- No, I have to, I talk nice. I do, I'm like, no, no, thank you. No, no, I don't you. mean not talking nice, but I mean sometimes I try to be like, is this as clear as possible? With yes. ChatGPT, I just kind of throw it in there. Oh, that's great. And that's then great. it'll tell me like if it yes. doesn't know it, but yes. I don't try to be like, did I say that clearly? I just kind of- Say it. Okay, so let's go back and talk about how it used to be. Yeah. So we used to do is we would have a landing page mm -hmm. and then I would write out the copy or we would write yep. out the copy. Mm -hmm. And then what we would do is old school. I am taking the copy and I'm putting it into a character counter mm -hmm. or a word counter. So I'd go to Google and I'd, I'd paste how many yep. characters or word count that is. And then I go to the template and I would copy like how long is this header? And then it would say, oh, it's 125 characters. And so I would go back to my copy and I say, oh, I have 233 characters. Let me see what I'm gonna cut out. And it would just take time. Whereas what we're essentially mm -hmm. doing is just saying, hey, chat GBT, do all yep. of the thinking for us, make it sound better. And then it's like working with a co-writing assistant yep. to get us there faster. And a co-writing assistant who's super fast. Yes, the best in the game. So easy. And we tell, we we tell chat GBT, this is one thing that Katie has taught me is you set the foundation yeah. for who you're speaking to mm -hmm. with chat GBT. So I used to say, which is not wrong, but there's a different way of doing it. I used to say, are you familiar with, and yeah. for this instance, I would say, are you familiar with writing high? Highly converting landing pages. Mm -hmm. 
And then it would respond, yes, I am. And then I would say, are you comfortable enough being a great copywriter? Mm -hmm. And so how do you prompt yeah. ChatGPT now if when you were doing the landing page? For the landing page, I told ChatGPT what it was. So I said, mm -hmm. you are an expert marketing strategist and copywriter. Mm -hmm. And I said, and you're working for Jasmine Starr. Here's Jasmine's Instagram. Here's Jasmine's website. Do you get her tone and style? Yes, we do. Okay, now here's the landing page that I'm writing for Jasmine. So it had a sense of who I'm supposed to be, marketing, that. copywriter, and then the tone I'm supposed to have. I love that. And those things are so easy. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, idea number two. Okay, so this one is totally not copywriting. I love this. We were planning an event for the Jasmine Star Mastermind. Yes. And this event is at the Elmwood Club at the Pendry. And there, it's beautiful. It's bespoke. And they had sent us, we said, okay, we're going to do breakfast and lunch options. And they sent us all these options. And they were amazing, amazing options. But they said, well, what do you want? You get to pick two of this and two was, of that. It was so glorious. It was so overwhelming. It was very <laughs> overwhelming. And I wanted it to all work together. And I'm not, you know, a cook. I'm not exactly sure what flavors are always best to pair. And we had a lot of people who were gluten-free. So I wanted to make sure that every option we had was gluten-free. So I loaded this menu into ChatGPT. And I said, okay, here's she a menu. uploaded yeah, the uploaded PDF it. of the menu to ChatGPT. I just want to make sure it's clear as possible. I love that. Okay, great. So uploaded the menu. I said, I'm planning an event. I need, we're, let's just talk about lunch. Yeah. Here's the lunch menu. And I need two appetizers, two entrees, two snacks, or whatever they called them on the site, two sides, two desserts. I said, I need them all to be gluten-free. And I said, I need them all to work cohesively together, right? Like I don't mm -hmm. need like two things that you never put together, right? Like cohesively together. And I need in at least each of those categories, the starter, the entree, whatever, at least one gluten-free option. And I said, can you create four menus for me from this menu? So then it created four, even labeled them. It was like cozy Mediterranean and like <laughs> adventurous, whatever. Oh, Chad, right? you right? little. I, it was very sneaky. And so then I had four. I just had to pick two lunches. So then I picked the two that I just thought the women in our group would like, like yes. lighter, fresher. Because our mastermind are seven figure female yep. founders. Like these are women who get the game. Yep. They know the game. They eat well. They think yep. well. And so we wanted to make sure that we had food that was reflective of the overall environment of how yep. we might up level. Yeah, exactly. I didn't want like the nacho cheese. Dough, you know? <laughs> so it gave me that option, but I was like, eh, let, let, let's go with the salmon. Yeah. With the crew today. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, okay, so what we did, upload a PDF, mm -hmm. we gave it specifications, we told it who yeah. it was choosing food for and dietary restrictions, and then it came back with four options. We picked one of the four options. It, how long did that take? Oh, like three minutes. It took like three minutes. Yeah. It would normally maybe take us like 15, 15. So I 20. probably would have researched. Like yes. I probably would have Googled, does salmon go with this? And then I would have been crossing it off on a, I mean, it probably would have taken me half an hour. Okay. Let's be real. So we went yeah. from uh, 30 minutes down to three. Yeah. Uh, let's go down into the third idea. Okay, so this, we were putting together mm. a list. So we have a program called the First Million Framework. And in this framework, you meet with Jasmine or a coach every other week. And so I was getting someone set up in this framework and I needed a list of basically every other week. So I was gonna do like a Tuesday. So every other Tuesday. And before I probably would have like sat down with my Google calendar and like handwritten down or like typed out Tuesday, this date, Tuesday, that date. And I was like, this just takes so much time. I said to ChatGPT, can you give me every other Tuesday from start date to end date? And it was like, bang, there's the list. And then I could send the list to the client and say, do these Tuesdays work for you for meetings? Mm. I didn't have to write them down. I didn't have to type them out. I got every other list. That was 20 seconds. Okay. So when Katie is talking about the first million framework, this is specifically for a business owner who is doing more than $500,000 trying to scale to a million. Mm -hmm. And so we are, it, it is very much handcrafted yeah. experience for entrepreneurs. And we want to make sure that they're having a white glove experience. Yeah. And so by her providing every single day, mm -hmm. getting it quickly, communicating that quickly to that type of founder, it really does change the dynamic. And we wanted to say, how might we wow them immediately with quick, attentive, and very specific times and dates. And so for those of you guys who are interested, it's jasminestar.com forward slash million. I didn't think I was gonna be talking about it, but you wanna know what? We are taking what is currently behind closed doors and we're yeah. slowly dripping out okay. to find the right people. Yep. It is not a yes for everybody. We're working with hand-selected business owners. Okay, so Katie, next idea. Okay, so the next one, this is for contracts. So I'm gonna go back and talk yes. about we're hosting this event for Jasmine's Mastermind at the Elmwood. And there's different parts of it. A lot of it's at the Elmwood. We have a little offsite thing. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really fun. But with everything comes a contract. Yes. So just in this experience, we're dealing with two or three contracts yep. at one event. At one event. And so they send it to us and they're like, can you review? And 
I'm not a lawyer. Um, I have a little bit of paralegal in the background, but it's not a lawyer, right? And they're long contracts and they're in, you know, those big block texts that your eyes just kind of skim over. So what I did is I took the PDF of the contract and I uploaded it into ChatGPT. And I said, can you summarize this for me in bullet points, right? So it's like these long blocks of text and they use these like Latin words, mm -hmm. summarize it for me in bullet points. And then I said, can you point out anything that might be of concern or anything I might want to pay attention to, right? Like maybe there's like, you have to be out by a certain time or one place is very sustainable. And they said, you cannot bring any single use plastics on property. Okay, well that would be something I'd want to pay attention to. And so very quickly, ChatGPT summarized the whole thing so I could skim it really quickly and be like, okay, I understand what we're agreeing mm -hmm. to. And then any areas of concern, I could pay special attention to them or make a note like, okay, we can't bring balloons to this event or whatever it might be. And then I felt confident being like, we can sign the contract, but it had also offered if there were areas that were really of concern, mm -hmm. would you like me to help you draft an email to change some of the terms of this contract? We yeah. ended up not needing it, but it was a nice step that I could see us using. Absolutely. Future. And so one thing that I would want to add on here, that's what for us using it collectively mm -hmm. as an organization. I'm also using it just independently for myself. And so I know that it's my job as CEO to really forecast expenses and to monitor what we can monitor. So there were times where I would go to a lawyer and I would say, mm -hmm. I need X, Y, and Z. And now what I've been able to do is I've been able to go back and forth quickly with ChatGPT mm -hmm. and ask it questions around certain contracts, certain considerations, the legality of a few things. And so what I I'm doing is I'm using chat GBT as a paralegal. I'm asking a bunch of questions that I would, then what I'm doing is I'm synthesizing this information, giving it a digital file and I'm turning it over to a lawyer. And I will say, I have done this work. This is what I've come up with. Do you agree to it? Now, essentially what I'm doing is I'm not replacing my lawyer hundred percent. What I'm saying is, can I get the ball to like the two yard line, have the lawyer approve and review what I have come up with to see if it's fine, logical, legal thinking, and then having that lawyer take it over the, the final into the end zone. Do you like how I got that legal and football? I love that. That was good. I, I think our husbands would so appreciate they would. that. They, they would. would. Okay, 100%. last last example. Okay, so this one, it's a, like a next level. So if you've kind of experimented with ChatGPT and you're ready to take it to the, to the next level, this is the paid ChatGPT. So I'm, I'm going to just warn you here. It's not that expensive. It's $20 a month. I think it's the best $20 The best $20. The best. So one of the things that you can do is create a custom bot. And when you create a custom bot, you want to think very narrow-mindedly. So instead of creating a copywriter, for example, you want to create a copywriter for your social media posts. So mm -hmm. it's just focused on your social media posts. So inside Social Curator, we send a newsletter every single week to our customers. And we say, hey, this is what's coming up. We give them tips on social media. We mm -hmm. give them, here's a reel that you might want to try, all sorts of things. And we have a copy doc and every week for years, we would go in, mm -hmm. write the copy, and it was just this running copy doc. So what I did was I turned this copy doc, it was a Google doc, saved it as a PDF, two clicks, right? Took this PDF that has three years worth of newsletters or more, mm -hmm. at least three. And I uploaded it into ChatGPT. And I said to ChatGPT, okay, you are an expert copywriter. You're writing for members of Social Curator. Social Curator is a subscription product. Mm -hmm. And I gave it the website so we could understand what Social Curator was. And I said, now I'm going to give you a PDF of a weekly newsletter that we send to our members every single week. And I was like, it has three years worth of stuff in it. Yes. And so they had exactly what we were as a business. They understood what we talked about, right? The types of things that we would do, our tone, our style, our sign off, all of that. And I said, okay, now I'm gonna need you to write newsletters going forward every week. So I basically created a custom bot and I uploaded these things. I also uploaded like a couple of our help center articles because I wanted yes. the bot to reference. We have great articles on like repurposing your content, doing transitions and reels. I wanted it to have that as a base that it's it could good. bring into the newsletter as well. So good. And so I uploaded all these things. So with a bot, you can upload a couple of things and it, that's basically the only source of reference that it uses. Yes. So it's not gonna be pulling in Instagram tips from the internet. It's just going to be pulling it in from all of your resources. So I had all of that and I, I gave it to the bot and I kind of shared it, our tone and our style. And now each week I just go to the bot and I say, Hey, this is what's coming up this week. Or I want to do a newsletter on this. And I give it like, like I said, I was going to talk to a copywriter. Hey, I really yes. think we should do a motivational message this week. So I mean, I'm going to pause yeah. here for a second. So I just want to make sure that it's crystal clear that while we have trained a bot, now people might hear this. I like to call them our virtual coworker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, so we have created a virtual coworker with a very siloed yeah. perspective. We have only created and taught our virtual coworker yeah. with our information, yeah. how we do things, yeah. not pulling from anything else. And now this virtual coworker has quite honestly mm -hmm. is doing the work that 
somebody else used to do. Yeah. So Katie is going in as the lead thinker and saying, this is our ideas. This is what makes us proprietary. This is what we want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. She is giving the whole vision and the main idea. Then our virtual coworker takes it and runs. Yeah. So this here again is that this virtual coworker is gonna take it down to the two yard line and then Katie starts with the idea and then Katie runs the ball into the end zone. Yeah. It's so easy. It's just like, think of if you were on a call with someone on your team and you they're the copywriter on your team. And you said, okay, this is what's coming up this week. We need an email on A, an email on B, and an email on C. And you've trained that person on your team. Yep. They've written with you for a while. They understand yes. your tone and they're like, got it, I understand. And they go and write it and then you look at it and you sign off on it. And mm -hmm. that's exactly the process, except this bot is a little bit faster and we can do it really fast. And so can I, and so yeah. this is where mm -hmm. I really want to talk and like, this is the future. Yep. So let's go back to how things used to be. Mm -hmm. I used to write these weekly newsletters to the social curator community. And then I realized, well, I had to get myself out of the weeds as a founder. So what I did was I worked with a small content team mm -hmm. saying, this is what I'm seeing. This is how we do it. And the process was until somebody took it from me is I would write the newsletter. Somebody would go through and add other details. Mm -hmm. Somebody would go through and proofread it. And then two people would receive it and test it. That is five it people. It took like a week it, to it, go through the process. It literally yeah. took a week to yeah. go through the process. And now our virtual coworker is so trained and we trust it that we know all typos will yep. be approved. Yep. It is in our voice. It has caught our vision. Yep. So we focus on using our virtual coworker. We are in control of yeah. ideation mm -hmm. and inspiration. Yep. They are in control of deploying against our desires. And then we QC. Yep. It's very easy. Quality the, control. Yeah, quality, me, control. quality control. Um, the best thing is if you were to just say, write a newsletter, it could write something that was like, eh. you know, like it would pass, but it's not genuine to us. But if we give it like, we know what's going on in our community, yes. we know what our users need, then it's going to be able to pull mm -hmm. all that in. So we're just at that thinking stage. I can get a newsletter together in 10 minutes, get it in our email system. And what once took five days, it's not like 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Y'all. It's great. Welcome to the future. If you have any other ideas, we would love to hear from you. Leave a comment on YouTube or send me a DM on Instagram. But more than anything, if you are ready to jump into AI, connect with somebody else. Share this episode with somebody and start seeing how you might be able to learn from each other. There is a small group of entrepreneurs that I'm constantly texting with texting with and we're saying, okay, what are you using yeah. this for? How are you using it? So we've learned that the more we get involved in other AI yeah. communities, the more that we're learning and leveraging. And as we do that, we are committed to sharing. Katie, thank you yeah. so much for being here. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for watching and listening to the Jasmine Star Show.